Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. If you are joining me for the first time, welcome. Those of you that have been here before, thank you so much for coming back. Um, in today's painting, this is going to be a super, super easy painting for my first time painters out there. Um, this is going to be a uh, Cliffs Beach painting and the flowers on there, I want you to think of them as blobs. They will still translate as flowers, but I want you to consider them as blobs when you paint them because that makes it a little bit easier. So if you are brand new to painting at home, this is an excellent video for you to check out and go through the steps on. So. What you're gonna see in my series of videos, in the link below, you're gonna see a link to a supply kit. Um, in that supply kit is everything that you need to create this particular painting, all your colors, all your brushes, your canvases. So take a look at that, gather what you need, and then um, come back and join us in the video. With this video and anything that you paint at home, I want you to be kind to yourself, be nice. It takes a lot of courage to paint at home, especially for the first time. And you will find out that it's not nearly as crazy or as scary as you think right now by the time you're done with the painting. So take it slow, have a good time, and at least get your first painting out of the way so that way the next ones will be even more fun and you'll be more relaxed and comfortable. Um, enough talking, let's go ahead and get started painting. All right, guys, this is gonna be a fun painting today. I want you to take a deep breath and just relax. Head over to wherever you've got your supplies and make sure you turn on your favorite music. Just kind of helps with your relaxation as you go through the process. And as always, make sure you take your progress photos. All right, so for this painting, we're gonna start with light blue. So I'm gonna take a touch of white or some white with a touch of blue and we're gonna create our horizon line. So I want you to go from the top corner and go down about four to five inches and make a line or make a dot. And then you're gonna kind of extend that dot and that line to the left side of the canvas. Now, as you paint, try a few different brush strokes. Try the long, wide strokes, try a skinny brush mark, and even try making X marks. Just kind of play with those and whichever one that you feel comfortable. Uh, kind of use that one a little bit more. Now, once you've got your horizon line on there, you are gonna be filling in with this light blue color from that line to the top of the canvas. And if you are painting on a stretched canvas, make sure you paint the edges of your canvas. And as you can see on my plate where I'm mixing the colors, um, I'm actually mixing that color a couple of times. It doesn't have to be the exact same shade of blue. And if you have a little variety, it is to your benefit. Um, when you're applying it because our sky does sometimes have some various shades in there. And here we're doing a wet on wet blending method. So I'm taking some of the straight blue, painting right on top of the lighter blue that we have in our sky, and then just moving the brush back and forth and blending the colors. This is actually a very relaxing part of the painting process. Now when you're done, go ahead and pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're gonna make a little bit darker blue for our ocean. And I want you to go to the left-hand side, go down about an inch or two, place a dot, and we're gonna start at that dot and make kind of an S shape. There we go. Oh, and I did put a little uh, dot at the bottom right canvas corner. Um, you can kind of eyeball it or place that dot there and kind of make a slide of connecting your lines, connecting your dots. And with that slightly darker blue, you're going to be filling in where our ocean is on our cliff. And this blue is a little bit darker than what you used in the sky. So it'll be this, mixing it the same way, but you're going to just going to add more blue. Each person's gonna have a slightly different shade. So again, does not have to be perfect. If you're one of my first time painters, take a deep breath for me right now. You may be holding your breath without realizing it. 
All right, so here we're gonna do the wet on wet blending method again, and we're taking that straight blue and putting it at the top of our horizon line to make our water a little bit darker. And then moving our brush back and forth to kind of blend. If you feel like finger painting and wanna move this around with your hands, go right ahead. All right, when you're done with your ocean, pause the video, take another progress photo. And we're gonna move into yellow and green paint. And you can see here I'm mixing the two. More yellow gives it a bit of a spring green, more green's a little bit darker. Make it to your liking. There's not an exact formula. And we're gonna be filling in our hillside with this color and it's the remaining space of our canvas, this bottom left-hand corner. And again, just like when we make the, made the blue, if you've got a different shade of green or yellow green compared to what you were mixing before, don't freak out about it. We're just kind of getting our underpainting and we'll be putting more paint on top of this as we go along the process. All right, you're doing a good job. Take a deep breath, relax. If you are using student grade paint, you will notice that your paint might be a little thinner, so feel free to apply it a little bit thicker. And here you can see I'm kind of globbing on that yellow. And it's almost kind of like icing a cake. So glob that yellow on there or that green and just kind of move it around and just play with your brush strokes. Hopefully you are a little more relaxed right now than when you first started painting. And that's pretty much the point of painting is just to relax. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. And we're gonna move into burnt sienna and get our cliffs on here. So we're going back up to close to that horizon line. Place a little dot out there in the ocean. And you can see where I moved up from that dot to kind of create the perimeter or the top part of our cliffs. And then did a little curl into where our grass is. And then just fill that space in with your burnt sienna. Again, you can apply it kind of thick. And if you need to reshape the top of that cliff, go right ahead. I'm actually extending it a little bit more and going above that horizon line. And does not have to be perfect. The cliffs are shaped very uniquely, so it does not have to be accurate of any one place. All right, so here you can see I grabbed that yellow just like we did with the grass, but placed it right on top of that burnt sienna, and I'm using light pressure to move the paint around. You will notice that that yellow does get eaten up by that darker brown color, so just use light texture, and if you need to reapply the yellow, go right ahead. All right, even now just taking a touch of black and doing that towards the bottom of the cliff. And just like the yellow, you'll see how the black kind of changes shades as you mix it in with the brown. And still using light pressure, little dots or little dab marks as you mix these colors. Again, it's kind of impressionistic, doesn't have to be perfect. And you wanna go ahead and pause the video and take your progress photo. And we're gonna practice our palm tree designs. And you can practice this on a scrap sheet of paper before you move to your canvas. But I want you to start with the trunk and you'll make it kind of the length that you want. And then we will add the palm fronds in kind of an umbrella shape direction. All right, so here you can see we're putting on the trunk of our palm tree. And then the first two palm fronds kind of hug the shape of the tree. It almost looks like a little firework on the end. Again, these do not have to be perfect. I'm proud of you for painting at home. And again, I hope you are more relaxed by painting now than when you first started. You can put as many or as few palm trees as you want on your cliffs or none at all, completely your call. And as you're making your, your palm trees, mind the pressure of your brush. So I want you to use a light pressure which is why I want you to practice on a scrap sheet of paper before you move to your canvas. 
And palm trees are very unique. They dance in the wind, they go in different directions. So don't overanalyze your palm trees too much. Take a deep breath. You're doing a great job. Oh, see on that palm tree, you can see I got a little thicker. Embrace it. It's okay. That palm tree is just extra healthy. All right, but amazing how that's kind of setting in our landscape. It immediately makes it more beachy. Take your progress photo when you are done with your palm trees, and we'll move into the next section. So we're going to put some clouds in. So we're using that small flat brush, going back to the white paint, and just kind of holding it perpendicular to the canvas and just making these dots, overlapping dots to kind of create our cloud shape. And this is, again, student grade paint, so it is a bit more on the transparent side. And when we're making clouds, that's a bit to our advantage. You can add as many or as few clouds as you like. Then we're gonna make a dark or a light gray. And you're gonna add a touch of black and you're gonna add the shadow, this light gray to the bottom of your clouds. And then you're gonna go back with white to kind of diffuse it because you likely added a little too much uh, black to your gray. So you can just put that white paint right on top and diffuse that gray a little bit. All right, so do take your progress photo after you do your clouds. And with that same application that we did the clouds, we're gonna put the white caps on our water. So holding your brush perpendicular, think about where the water would be, the waves would be coming into the beach and where the waves would be kind of crashing on our cliffs. And again, you're just using light pressure, the tips of the brush, and just making a consecutive line of overlapping dots. Again, do not overanalyze this, especially as you are sitting very close while you're painting this. Uh, when you are done, I want you to put this on the wall, take some steps back and look at your painting from a distance. Now we're gonna do that same thing with blue paint and just kind of give them a little bit more depth to our waves and to our ocean. And these will be a bit more lines. You don't have to do that dabbing effect unless you want to. And again, I'm applying that paint kind of thick, reshaping maybe a few places that I want, maybe a little more water, maybe raise my horizon line a little bit. You are the master of your painting, so you can adjust and change as needed. You're doing a good job. This is a really fun and kind of impressionistic style painting to do for your first painting. All right. Take a deep breath. You're doing good. We are almost done. We're going to be moving into flowers next. And when we paint our flowers, I want you to think of them as blobs. We're not going for a specific flower shape or anything. This is one of your first paintings. So everybody can paint a blob. And when you look at it from a distance, it's amazing how much that blob looks like a flower or is an impression of a flower. And for your flowers, you can use any color you want. Here, I'm gonna be using red, and then I'll be using a light lavender for other blobs of our flowers. And again, psychologically calling it a blob makes your brain, makes it a little bit more approachable for your brain. All right, so here uh, we're moving into our light lavender. So we're gonna take our white with a little bit of purple. Again, make it whatever color or intensity and shade you want. And we're gonna make round blobs here. So similar to how we made the clouds, um, though this is a little bit thicker, just kind of making overlapping dots to create our shape. And a lot of times our flowers overlap in nature, so it's okay if you overlap um, your flowers here on your painting. Maybe have a few of them going off the edge of the canvas, giving the indication that there's more to this painting than what is vis uh, physically shown here. All right. Adding a few more, and I think later on I actually put one in that bottom right-hand corner because it just needed something. All right, so take your progress pictures at any point along the way as we go about this. And now we're going to take straight purple, and just like on the clouds, we're going to make one section, the bottom section, a little bit darker. 
and we're creating value by putting a darker shade here. We will go in with some white to create a lighter shade. And again, this is also what makes it kind of impressionistic, stylized, where we allow our brain to kind of fill in some of the details that aren't actually drawn on there. And it's quite amazing how much our brain fills in the details. All right, so here now we're gonna take the white, kind of thick, and we're gonna go over all of our flowers. And we are kind of keeping these a little bit more on the top of the flower and overlapping some of the other colors a little bit. Be generous as you're applying that white paint, so that way it can stay kind of thick. And it gives a bit of a contrast with that pure white on our paint, or on our canvas, sorry. <laughs> and then like I said, I think we're gonna put a few in the, where the red flowers are. Any changes or anything that you wanna to add to your painting to make it extra special and unique, go right ahead and do that. I do hope you guys enjoyed the painting. It was rather quick, so don't take yourself seri too seriously when you go to create this at home. Remember, they're just blobs. It's just swatches of paint, and you get more comfortable the more that you paint. So until next time, have a great evening, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you enjoyed it so much that you're already planning to paint something else next week or next month, but please try to find a way to have a creative outlet in your life at least once a month. Um, the world's not getting any less stressful, so you need to find your outlets um, to relieve your own stress from your world. All right, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that. Check out the other videos. Let me know what you want me to create in the future. Leave a comment below. Um, as you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at Paint with Lovejoy or hashtag Paint with Lovejoy. Um, feel free to even email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Your feedback, your pictures really keep me going because I am a solo show here. And by seeing what you guys do at home, like I said, it gives me motivation to keep making these videos. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I'm honored that you chose one of my videos to use and look at, and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. There we go. Oh good, I can actually watch them from here. Waiting on the plane. So, um, we're gonna pause for the plane again. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that. Check out my other videos. I'm gonna wait for the plane again.